Yo, hello. I am PMC Trilogy, uh, and tonight I'm going to be running for you Die Hard Nakatomi Plaza Any Percent. Uh, this is a 2002 first person shooter made by Piranha Games. Uh, let's get into it right away. Time is going to start after this next load screen. This, is sh this load screen should take a few seconds, and I'll say go as soon as it goes away. Uh, and we'll get, get right into it. Uh, if you've seen the movie, you know the movie takes a little over two hours. This is going to take us hopefully a little under 35 minutes to get through. This is a, a game that attempts to faithfully recreate the movie. This lo first load screen. This is a lift tech game. If you're uh, big, and sometimes <laughs> the opening cutscenes don't work. What we're supposed to be seeing is a fade, and, uh, and the fade has broken sometimes. This is pretty normal. Right, so your lady sees you. But we, thankfully, we can just quick save, quick load to get rid of it. Uh, our bread and butter in this run is clipping through doors. So there, we were supposed to go to a panel to learn where our wife is hanging out, but uh, we can just clip through the elevator door and immediately head to where we need to go. Uh, the way that door clipping works in this game is you want, want to always put yourself next to a door, of course, and then also the door frame. Uh, and specifically, you are pushing, you're sprinting into the corner at an angle that is parallel to the surface of the door. Wait, I need my gun. Oh. <laughs> I'm so excited about door clips that I forgot to explain important important things i gotta act out the movie so i mentioned before this is a game Ladies that is all about the Die Hard movie and so you're gonna see all sorts of scenes unfortunately none of the actors from the Die Hard movie are here except for uh the police officer uh, portrayed by reginald bell johnson he does uh reprise them, his role but everyone else is uh <laughs> not the original article but yes yeah. So now we're going to pull a fire alarm, and then we're going to cause some accidents. Uh, we need this axe in order to progress past some wood planks, but it's also useful as a one-hit kill weapon uh, while we're running around. So for example, these guys are just hanging out, and then I just ask them some questions. And then these boards here are why we need the axe. You can't destroy those boards with, with a gun. That would that would not work. The fire. So there is the fire alarm sequence. Fire alarm gets disabled. And now we need to chase this guy. And we're gonna cause uh, another workplace accident. Osha would not approve of this game. That guy gets instantly one hit KO'd by the wood. And now we need to go grab some of the stuff that he dropped. Zippo lighter. Zippo lighter. CB radio. And this guy, we can't take his shoes. We want his shoes. We wish we could have his shoes, but we're not going to get his shoes. But that does mean that we now have a machine gun. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas, everybody. I wanted this. Yeah, I feel like the the actor who does does fake Bruce Willis is pretty good, but fake Alan Rickman, I, I'm not I'm not sold on. There are some original sequences here. There's a sequence where a bomber is planting bombs, and we were supposed to defuse them, uh, but we're not going to do that. That would that would be slow. Also, I want to note that John McClane is left-handed, uh, but I'm not left-handed. I only play a left-handed video uh, character in a video game. So I mentioned we're supposed to fight the bomber to get his uh, his wire cutters so that we can defuse the bombs he planted, but we can just clip through the door and exit the level. So this is our first time on the roof. There's a lot of uh, level reusage in this game. But thankfully, most of these levels we we're able to bypass just by clipping through things. That there is a weird one. Instead of being a door and a door frame, later on when we revisit this level, there is a door there in that fence. And so we are clipping off of a door that doesn't exist yet, or at least in that version of the level.
the door clip, as you can tell, is very specific about the angle that you're using to get through. So here I want to activate a trigger to make this guy open the door for me. Because I want to shoot him anyway. Some of these doors you can clip through to deactivate enemy AI. But generally, I'm going to open them if they're open. There's a few exceptions I'll point out as we go through. And now we're in the vents, just like the movie. Folks, everything in this game is just like the movie, okay? That's really important. Uh, I'm gonna have to wait here a little bit for uh, a timed event to happen. So if uh, there's any plugs or anything, now would be a great time. Come up to the coast, we'll get together. Suddenly, thank you very much. We actually now have know a couple of incentives coming up. Like After this run, we are going to have the so last keep us, quiet. and there is the Left Behind DLC single player. And if met, then we will do any percent bonus on that. It needs $750 to reach the goal, and currently only has 75 So let's get those donations in. Awesome. So here we have to wait until that door closes to get out of the vents, or otherwise we just get automatically murdered. Shoot him. Now, another classic diehard movie fight with this weird long table in this conference room. So now we have to wait for this guy because we have to throw him out of the window so that we can do the whole welcome to the party pal line. Yep, throw the, throw the dead body onto the cop car, get their attention, and then leave. In this game, there's a bunch of parts where, as we're walking, the game tries to force us to stop to use a walkie-talkie. You can jump into those triggers to still gain you know, a little bit of forward time while the game tries to force you to stop, since it doesn't just make you hang up in midair. All right, another door clip. Yeah, so all of these, a lot of these levels, again, they're designed like a circle and you can go from the one end to the other by clipping through a locked door and just pretty much make them, you know, a 30 second level. However, not all of them are like that. This will be one of the longer ones where we have to babysit Argyle, who you may remember as the limo driver from the movie. I have just activated a glitch called Short John. John McLean is now short. He goes a little faster by being short. Uh, some of you may have heard of Bigger Luke Theory, but in Die Hard they have Shorter John Theory. And this is it. This is the whole theory. We are able to clip through the door at the end of this level, but unfortunately it won't activate unless we get Argyle to come with us in his limousine. I would love to be able to end this level without waiting for him, but that would really be a stretch, I think. It's a limo joke. Move. The main objective here is that we want to take out certain enemies as soon as they spawn. So for example, here, this guy that comes around the corner, I'm gonna need to get as soon as possible to keep the car moving as much as possible. There we go. And that is the end of the Argyle Escort. Uh, there are two escort missions in this game. Thankfully, we're able to skip one of them. That'll that'll come up later. Uh, flashbangs are a real nuisance in this game, but usually we can avoid them just by looking up. Here, the game sends a forklift at us. Uh, this is probably a ten, top 10 forklift from video games, but we're able to defeat him pretty easily. He just pushes us. Sometimes you can clip through, but you can't actually get through these barrels. You still have to wait. We're gonna intentionally not kill those two guys up there. Uh, it'll prevent enemies from spawning up here.
So you may notice there are there are three meters in this game. Some of them are pretty obvious. That top one with the heart, that's a health meter. Uh, the lungs is your stamina meter. And then the bottom one is a brain meter. Uh, there are some theories on what that does. There's like written text that it's about morale. But what the effect of morale is on the player and the enemies is not well documented. I like to think of it as a galaxy brain meter. Take that to mean what you will. So I mentioned earlier that typically we are clipping through doors just because they're locked, right? Like that's the, the most obvious reason you do something like this is because the game wants you to unlock the door and you don't want to waste the time to unlock the door. But there are doors that I will clip through just to prevent enemy spawns. So for example, this one I'm going to clip through and this whole room would be full of enemies and there'd be a guy behind this door who would make it difficult to open that door. So even though that door was unlocked, I choose to clip through it anyway. So here, I need to scrape along this wall to activate two enemies over here to come out of this crate, because otherwise I can't get through this. There's no way for me to clip through this. I need them to open it for me. And you can do that. You can skip having to walk around the corner into another hallway by just scraping the wall to make them come after you. So this is gonna be a lot of clips in a row because we're, we're basically skipping a whole bunch of steps. This sewer level is supposed to be very, very convoluted, uh, but thankfully we can avoid most of that. Provided I can clip through the door. There we go. So the big risk here is that there's a bunch of SWAT guys on this other side of the door, and they will shoot at me, and I, there's nothing I can do to make them stop. Uh, there is supposed to be a badge mechanic that'll come up later that should make them stop, but it doesn't work on these guys because you're not normally not supposed to be near them. And if you shoot them, it's instant game over because you're a police officer, and why would you be shooting other police officers? That's ridiculous. All right, time for my least favorite <laughs> trick. We can walk up this ramp uh, just by sort of looking at it and then going up it. But uh, at this point, if I fell backwards, it w I would just die and it would be really deeply embarrassing. But hey, you know, we made it up, so easy peasy. All right, gonna grab some health and on our way. We're out of the sewers. That used to be, that's a deeply, if you play this game casually, that's probably the worst level in the game, or one of them at least. So hop over here. So there's gonna be a guy with a powerful gun that we want. We're gonna take care of him. And then we're gonna go back up this stairwell again. We're in the stairwell at least like three or four times. There's a bit of level usage. I had mentioned earlier that this game is made by Piranha Games. Uh, you may know them for having recently launched MechWarrior 5, and it's a lot of the same people. Uh, I recently added the uh, <laughs> the president of the company about this game, so. But anyway, we're through that level. Now we're gonna be on to a nice run and gun section, which will conclude with a a boss in a machine gun nest. All units be advised. Receiving heavy machine gun fast So here's another example of a door I'm gonna clip through to avoid a bunch of enemy spawns. Fire. This room would be full of guys. This guy's gonna try and throw a flashbang, but no such luck for him. In this next sequence, we're supposed to go through this door over here, but we're able to clip through these doors, so avoids a whole fight sequence.
We're gonna open this one though because there's just one guy back here and it's not really a big deal. But now we're gonna have the part where there's a machine gun, We've got a bunch of uh, officers pinned down, and we're gonna go ahead and defuse that issue. So I killed that guy way early, but I, it's okay. I still got his gun and I still activated that end sequence anyway. Uh, enjoy this huge muzzle flash, which, which prevents me from seeing literally anything I'm shooting at. And another boss down. Uh, so now we have a few levels that are supposed to be escort missions. Uh, this guy we're supposed to escort to open a door for us, but <laughs> door, as it turns out, locked doors aren't really a problem for John McLean. So, we're, we don't need him. Right, so he would normally unlock this door for us, but yeah, <laughs> about that. And this next level would be a level where we would escort an architect around a floor that is on fire, and we would have to use a fire extinguisher to safely guide him. Uh, also a big hassle, but also something that we get to skip. As soon as I open this door, it's going to activate the escort guy's AI. And uh, let me assure you that he, he is coming. He cannot be stopped by anything. He is, in fact, unstoppable by by literally anything. He just goes. He's he's that boy. Oh my God. Uh, and so now we have to kill a bunch of guys to allow him to open the elevator doors for us. So this is just a nice sequence where we sit here and shoot some boys. Usually, I think it's about half a dozen of them. They'll try to flashbang me from long distance. It will not work. And we got one more, and then I can jump into the elevator shaft. I got it, I got it. And then I'm able to squeeze past the elevator. And then... Oh, there we go. I can also t mash crouch as I'm going down to go faster down as well. And I'm there's a cutscene there that plays where he falls to his death because the elevator comes loose. And I guess we're able to save him. Maybe he's alive now in, in the speedrun cannon. Uh, this level is called In the Vents. We will not spend any time in the vents. Yep, guess what? <laughs> the end of the level's right here. But gonna grab some health from the kitchen anyway. Important to stay hydrated or bandaged. All right, so time for some more iconic movie scenes. Now we get to the part where they send the car uh, and, and it doesn't work out for them, for the, uh, for the FBI that is. Yep, there's the car. The car actually keeps driving even after I cancel the cutscene. Sometimes you can hear it from up here. Geronimo, yeah, there you go. Iconic movie Let's scene. Kick the explosives. If you're really good at clipping through doors, you can clip through that door before the cutscene. And what that means is that you can avoid a bunch of enemy spawns. Uh, it's not super important, but it's, it's a good swag strat if you can do it. Also, will probably save you some some damage. So I mentioned earlier, there's a badge mechanic, and there is a part of the game where we have to use it, and that's right here, Be <clears throat> because these three guys will come in and they will respond to the badge. Hey, I'm the good guy. And they want they want John McCain to John McCain, John McClane to uh, you know to let them know what's going on. And they want yeah they want to follow me, but that's not going to work well for them. 
because we're going to clip through a door and they can't follow us. You're supposed to take them to a swimming pool and the locker room and do all kinds of stuff with them, but we're just going to clip through that door and exit. Attention. So now, Sir? now we're going to meet Bill Sir? Clay, who it, I'm not going to, if you haven't seen Die Hard, you may not know who Bill Clay is, but let me assure you that he is absolutely not Hans Gruber. Yep, there's Bill Clay, who is not Hans Gruber. And so now we would return to this level to do the the scene where they shoot the glass. You know, shoot the glass. And but we actually know that this is Hans Gruber. I lied. So we're just gonna leave him instead of doing the scene. Cause like why would you hang around for that? That'd be ridiculous. There also should be more enemies there, but only that one at the very end spawns. But even though we avoided walking through the glass with our bare feet, our feet will still be bloody at the beginning of this level. And so now we just have a quick sprint to where we need to go. Some running and gunning along the way. And we're going to actually get to an exciting new clip. So this door clip stuff has been known for a few months. but uh, And I should credit Albert Hammock was the guy who really came up with a, with a lot of this. He was the one who found this tech and uh, got me to run the game along with Arch Magus, who also recommended it. Uh, and it turned out pretty well. I've had a lot of fun with this game. It is enjoyable. Uh, but Albert discovered right. something new this week. He discovered a way to clip through uh, walls in this level. Uh, the doors in this, the doors that we would want to clip through in, in this next level are not don't have a door frame, so we can't use our normal method of clipping. And so instead, what we're going to do is uh, change our hitbox, uh, and this will help us clip through walls. Uh, you may wonder how do we how do we change our hitbox? Well, we're going to use the power of toilet paper. Uh, if you're wondering why everyone's so interested in toilet paper recently, it's because they discovered you can use it to clip through walls. So, here we go. So now we have changed our hitbox using the power of toilet paper. We're going to go over to this corner because this is where the end of the level is. And we're going to clip through the wall and then I'm going to look longingly at the exit sign. And the exit sign will grant me my wish of coming back in bounds to continue the game. But yeah, that was just discovered a few days ago, and again, credit to Albert Hammock for the cool, cool speed tech. So here's gonna be our usual, usual stuff. We're gonna run through all these rooms, past these guys uh, who are not shooting at me yet. Okay, well they're saying mean things to me. Now we're gonna use this door to jump up to the second floor and clip through some more doors and get to the end. Very good, that guy, his AI is not active, so he just has to think about what he's done with his life. And we are to the next level. So this one, uh, there's a optimal clip that we could clip directly to the end of the level. Uh, unfortunately, that is deeply unreliable. It's like a 5% thing, uh, so <laughs> no one does it. Once in a while, I try to try to find a consistent way to do it, and it just doesn't happen. However, we can clip through a door that will allow us to open that door, uh, which is going to make this a lot more manageable. Oh, I might be dead. Oh, still alive. 
Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, in this game, too, if you die, uh, you have to stare at this game over screen for a little bit. They don't let you. <laughs> they don't let you just live. They don't let you reload right away. So. Egg on my face. But there's emergency health right here, so not a big deal. Uh, and this next part is going to be a little rail shooter sequence on this elevator, but we're going to be able to position ourselves in just such a place that uh, none of the enemies will be able to see us because they're all in these elevator doors. So I'm going to be stuck here for like 30 seconds if there's anything that should be said. Absolutely sorry about that. My microphone broke again. Uh, we have a $10 donation from Vulgaris who says, I wish we saw John's feet. Thank you very much for your donation. And just to remind everybody, we are raising money for future ESA events. So please get those donations in. Awesome. Yeah, we can't see our feet. I don't know. That seems like a lift tech thing. I, don't, I can't think of any lift tech games. Actually, I guess the Jupiter engine with fear maybe. But Shogo, you can't see your feet. And what lift tech game is more important than Shogo? But yeah, so all the enemies are in these elevator doors, but we are in the perfect position that they cannot see us. So we just get to enjoy this suspenseful music and a nice comfortable ride to the top. And there's the exit. Is that great right there? All right, so now we're approaching some of the final combat sequences. In this level, we're going to fight Carl. Carl is mad at us because I think we killed his brother along with probably several of his several dozen of his best friends in, in, this, in, the, in the game. There's a few enemies. Yeah, there might be a few more terrorists in this than there are in the movie. Perhaps. Uh, all of the medical items are really tiny in this game, so I assume John McClane just has huge hands. Alright, so now we're going to fight Carl next, and we'll pull out a better weapon for that. Here's Carl. Carl's gone. All right, this guy's going to aggro on us, so I'm just going to let him come towards us because this room is dangerous. Uh, actually, I think we'll keep this for now. Oop. All right. That is my tactical error there. See, as I told you, that room can be pretty deadly in any run, so. I think we're gonna go ahead and stick to plan A. Very good. And that takes us back to the roof for some more iconic movie scenes. But before that, health. Tiny, tiny health. Alright, so once again, we're going to use this to clip out. And that drops us right there so we can go to the end of this gauntlet. Grab the fire hose and then jump off. And the roof explodes. But we're okay. Here we can actually use our machine gun to give us backwards force and not make the window. That window is very, very inconsistent, so sometimes you just fall to your death. But we have autosaves. And we're fine. Up here, same old thing. We're going to clip through to get to the end of the level. Clipping through on the one side of that door prevents some enemy spawns in this next room, so it's usually you want to use that side to avoid that. Uh. 
So this game has like a cap on the number of enemies that can be in the level. And I mentioned earlier some enemies that won't spawn if you don't kill previous ones. And so here, there's enemies here that aren't spawning because we didn't kill earlier ones. And then again, I'm gonna clip through this. That door is unlocked, but I clip through it. There's a guy that's supposed to be here with a machine gun who's extremely accurate and deadly, but he does not appear thanks to that clip. All right, we'll get through that room pretty good. And then we're on to the final level. Where we discover that instead of a terrorist act, this whole thing has been a robbery. Robbery? Yep, it's all about a robbery. Cool. So now we're going to activate the end boss, but we're not going to do it right away because another enemy is going to spawn behind us. And we need to go take care of that first before we deal with this. We also kind of need his ammo. All right, so this this is the end boss. It is the worst part of this game. So I'm waiting for certain animations where he's gonna t oh, tilt his head to the side because uh, it's much safer than trying to shoot this other one. Yeah, there we go. And I need to hit him twice in each of these phases. Uh, the hitboxes are pretty weird too. If you shoot at a different time, uh, there's a chance you could kill Holly and uh, that's like instant game over. It turns out you can shoot Hans Gruber eight times in the head, but you can you can't shoot can't shoot her once. All right, there we go. Got him again. We have to do this four times. Uh, time is coming up in probably about a minute. Sometimes his hitbox extends there. Yeah, for that animation. There we go. Cool. All right, so he moves the shelving out of the way, then goes back up where we were before. Here, we can't stick too close to him because if we get too close, he does just murder her and it's game over. And then it is even through walls too. So it's not like it's a, like a linear thing. You, you gotta wait for him to go around this part. Because if you go up this ramp too fast, you will be too close by the, I guess, by the count of the radius. And he's going to get up to this window from the movie. And then we got to shoot him two more times, and that'll be uh, game over. I'm like, ooh. All right, those shots are not counting. Oh man. Oh wait. Uh I'm <laughs> That has never happened before. Uh I, Does that count? I'm going to have to get a oh, Wait, I am the mod for this game. I don't know. All right, that killed her. <laughs> I'm stunned by that. I've never seen that happen. All right, there we go. And then time. All right. Well, that was exciting. Uh, <laughs> I don't think that counts. You probably need to not get a game over, even if you get the ending cutscene for two seconds. Uh, folks, that's the Die Hard Not Contemi Plaza 2002 PC game. I'm PMC Trilogy. I'm available on everything. Please support ESA. They are super awesome and good, and I really like them. Uh, and please enjoy the rest of the marathon. The next run is super, super good. If you've never seen... Anthony Caliber do Last of Us. It is excellent. So I think that is about it for me.